Hi, welcome to VAI. This is your mentor, Julian. How are you? Well, at this point in time, we are already in the crucial stage of the hiring or recruitment process. Since you already have your resume written, your cover letter written, you already submitted it. You also have a professional profile in LinkedIn and you have the perfect job that you want to apply to. I know the most important part would be attending an interview. So this is the most important and crucial part of the hiring process. And I understand how difficult or how challenging this can be. That's why I did created this discussion and how to ace your interview. So for this video, what we will talk about, we will learn what an interview is, what you need to do before, during and after the interview, and some tips for you to ace your interview. All right, so let's go into the course and let's see what's up. All right, so first of all, you have to know what is an interview. An interview, this is something that the recruiter or your prospect client organized to evaluate you as a candidate qualified for the role. Uh, the main purpose is to find out if you are suitable or if you are the right person for the position or not. Also, this would help them ask questions, maybe questions that were not answered through your resume or cover letter. And this is also your chance so that you can ask them questions about the company. So you have an idea what the company is before you work for them or before joining the team. All right, so that's the main purpose of an interview, and that's what an interview is. And regarding this matter, there are no second chances. That's something that you have to understand. Since, uh, as I said earlier, this is the most important part of the hiring process, and also this is not like writing your resume or your cover letter that you can edit again and again and again and again. At this point, once you said it, it's all been done. You cannot erase it. You cannot go back and edit what you've said. That's why it's important for you to be comfortable with the process so that it would be a better uh, job interview for you. Okay? So always remember, there are no second chances here. So you have to make it count once you are in that interview. And also, you have to know why it's important to have an interview. Important for the company, you have to think it into, I mean, to, you have to um, relate it to the company. Why is it important for them to interview you? Just imagine having a bad hiring decision. It could cost them a lot of things, especially time, money, and productivity. Let's say, for example, they had the bad hiring decision and they hired a very lazy person, a person who is tardy and who is always uh, absent. This person is eating their time. It's so costly because they had to train that person and while being trained, that person was paid. So waste of money. And also, that person was expected to do the job. However, since that person is late or tardy, he or she was not able to do the job. Not productive at all. So that's how you can think of what would happen if they hired the wrong person. Okay? And also for this matter, um, it always depends. Because sometimes uh, companies would just do uh, one interview, there are other instances where and they do multiple rounds of job interviews, especially if you, there are a lot of can, candidates for a specific role. For example, for a social ma a media manager role, they just need three because they have three Facebook pages. However, there are 10 to 15 candidates, so they need to really filter and cross out those who are not qualified. So it depends. Sometimes you have direct clients, you direct prospect clients, they just do one round. But if it's company, within a company, usually they do two to three rounds, starting with the hiring manager up to the decision maker themselves. Okay, so there you go. 
and also to have a view of what company thinks of a job interview, you have to also know that com companies think that their most important assets are people. Not money, not the products and services they sell, it's the people within that organization, within that company. And to choose the right, to choose the right people, there are no shortcuts. Okay, so if you could just think about it, it could be easy for the hiring manager to just pick, pick anyone to be part of the team. However, in the long run, it could be so devastating. So it's better if the hiring manager have difficulties choosing the right person, at least they choose really well, and it would, it would be important or relevant in the company for the long run. Okay, so that's how important people are. And since you will be ongoing an interview, then once you, you'll be part of the team, then you'll be considered an asset of the business. And how to prepare for an interview? Let's find out. So being knowledgeable of what to expect during an interview will help you survive not just get a cost, but survive this crucial part of the hiring process. The interview, it could be your chance to expand on the, uh, on the um, features, on the uh, information that you have written on your resume. And at this point, you are already selling yourself. You are marketing yourself. Okay? So that's how you think about whenever you prepare for your interview. So it's similar whenever you write your cover letter, whenever you write your resume, you have to choose the best words. Choose the right words to use, okay? Now, let's dig in, for, dig in deeper on how you could prepare for your interview. So you have to know or you have to be prepared of questions that might be thrown at you. Most of the time, they would ask questions about your skills, accomplishments related to your education or work experience. They would also ask about your strengths and weaknesses, interests and hobbies, likes and, likes and dislikes. Okay, so to prepare, you have to first assess your strengths. Assess what you are good at, what you are best at, your strengths. And then, once you assess your strength, you relate that to the company needs, to the employer's needs, to the job description. How would you know? How could you relate your strength to the job description? By doing your research. So you have to research, research on the company's profile, the company's background. Um, you have to really check and read through the job description of itself for you to pinpoint what strengths you have that relate to the job and to the company. And to let them know that you have the strength, you have to be an effective communicator. You have to communicate effectively. So you really have to prepare for your verbal as well as your nonverbal strategies and be prepared for tough questions that they'll be asking. Okay, so earlier I said you have to pre prepare and you have to start by assessing your strengths. So how do you know your strengths? Okay, why, why do I have to know my strengths? Actually, in most interviews, strengths are the most commonly asked questions. Okay. Since they're the most commonly asked questions, you have to develop a list of your strengths. And then within that list, you have to show how you have that strength by demonstration. And then you have to relate it to the role that you are applying for. Okay, and to help you, these are some ways. Okay, let's start. Right. So Kaya sila talagang nagtatanong about your strength. It is because they want to, sabi ko nga kanina, you have to know your strengths so you can align it to their needs. That's why they also ask the question of what are your strengths because the employer or the hiring manager would like to align your strengths to what they need inside the company. 
your strengths or what you are or yes, if you are fitting for the role, then you can do the job and you can perform exceedingly. They ask you for this, for your strengths because they want to know to know if you are the best person for the job. Do you have the skills and qualities? Do you have the experience or the knowledge? Okay? Or are you the person they are looking for to complete their rock star team? That's why they want to know your strength. So it's really important for you to check on this very important part that they would ask in an interview, knowing your strength. All right. And to develop a list of your strengths, these are some tips. Uh, maybe you can start a list of five to ten. Five to ten of your strengths. And for you to um, create that list, you have to answer this one question. Ano ba sa tingin mo ang strength? What do you think is a strength? There. In that way, pag nasagot mo yon, tanong na yon, it would be easier for you to create a list of your own. Because you know yourself, you know what you are good at, you know your strengths, so it would be easier. Okay? And for you to, I mean, to help you out, create your list, these are some tips. You can answer these questions. What accomplishments are you proudest of? Accomplishments that you had before. What have been your recognitions? Maybe you were recognized by your past client or employers, right? Also, what other rewards or recognitions have you received? There. Those are some questions that you can answer. In that way, you can develop a list of your strengths, right? And once you have that list, now it's the time for you to prove that you have that strength, those strengths that you have in that list. Okay. How do you demonstrate or how do you prove that you have this, those strengths? Through demonstration. Okay? And demonstrate, pan, paano ko ba sasabihin na, paano ko ba ipuprove sa kanya na itong sinabi kong strength ko na to is strength ko talaga. Siyempre, ang proof mo kung anong nagawa mo in the past. This is situational. Maybe, you have issues na na-recognize mo and addressed in the past. You solved problems. There were company processes that you have improved. Expenses na nabawasan because of your strength, of what you have done for the team or for the actions or ideas that you have contributed. Maybe profits regenerated na dagdagan yung sales ni company because of you because of your ideas, and also other improvements. Itong mga to, they demonstrate your strength. So first, you create your strength, a list of your strength, and then second, demonstration. There. That means that you are proving them, you are showing a proof to them that you have those strengths. All right. And, ang nasabi ko, you have to really create a list Physically ha, kasi minsan pag iniisip natin, ah oh, yes, ito yung sasabihin ko sa interview. Ito yung list na ano ko. But at times, you might forget. So better yet, create your list. Write it down. Maybe you have a sticky note. Write it down. Para at least, you can always check back on that list. And if you have forgotten anything, then you can edit or you can add more. Okay? And then, Para mas madali mo ma-visualize on how you're going to expound on those length, I mean on those list of strengths. Okay? And you have to relate your chosen strengths to the requirements. Yun na, lagi dapat relevant siya sa hinahanap nila to, for you to be part of the company or the team. And then yun nga, demonstration by examples. Kaya yeah, yung parang sinabi ko kanina dito sa previous part, yung may na-solve ka na problem or may complicated process sa, com sa previous company na nakaisip ka ng idea to make it simplified, to make it easier for everyone. 
there. So those are examples on how you can demonstrate your skills. Okay? All right. Next one, I've been reiterating this on my previous discussion, especially on cover letter and resume. So at this point, I think it's already easier if you're, you've done this. And that is researching about the company. Okay? Again, di ba sinabi ko na, na, to, ko na to, when you were writing your resume, when you were writing your cover letter, research about the company, the language that they speak, the keywords that they use, and use it to your advantage. Same here before or while you are preparing for the interview itself. Right. So for the interview or for researching about the company, you need to answer this question. Why or bakit gusto mong mag-work sa company na to, sa organization na to, or sa client na to? You have to have a reason why you, have, you want to work for them. Okay? And you have to understand, gusto ng mga interviewers ng prospect client mo na i-hire ka kapag willing ka talagang mag-work sa kanila. You have the desire to work for their organization, for the client, or for the company. And also, you have to do your research. As I said before, do your research by checking the job description through the job that they posted, the company website, the company profile, maybe via LinkedIn. And also, you have to, you, you can actually know more about the company if you check the products and services that they offer there. So that's how you research, really. Um, it's, uh, this part is more an expounding more about uh, researching about the company because I've been really talking about this in the past. So research before you write your resume, research before you write your cover letter, and still, research before you go and attend an interview. All right? So that's how important it is. You can research about the organization's history, structure nila, maybe financial information if it's re re relevant, like their sales, profitability, work ethics nila. Regarding work ethics, you have an advantage if you know someone inside the organization, maybe a friend, a colleague, then you can ask the person, hey, I, I heard you work for this company. How was your experience working with them? Do you recommend na mag-apply din ako sa company na to? Maganda ba? Anong culture nila inside? There, better nga yun eh, na you have someone that you know inside so you could really assess them according to their employee. Kasi, more or less, yung sinasabi ng employee about them is really who they are. And it, it would give you um, more thought if you are really willing to work for that company. Right? So that's, the, that's, that's how important doing your research is. Okay. And now, the interview begins. I know the heartbeat is getting stronger and faster at this point in time. But whenever you meet the interviewer for the first time, gano ka man kakabado, you must appear as confident as possible. Be assertive, pero wag na ma-aggressive. You can be friendly, but not overly familiar. Okay? So at this point, we have what we call the two-minute impression. So this is the first I mean, the crucial first minutes of the job interview. Okay, so you only have more, I mean, not more than two minutes to have or to create a first impression. So make it count. Don't waste your time. Dun. Shoot na agad sa basics. Approach the basics immediately. And that's through greeting the interviewer, asking them how the, their day is going, and then introducing yourself. At times, whenever you ask them, how are you doing, they would immediately answer and then they'll start talking. O, diba? And then, doon na, magisisimula ang interview. Okay. So, whenever you speak to the interviewer, you have to also know 
ano ba ang hinahanap nila? Ano bang hinahanap nila sa isang candidate? Okay? What they look for in a candidate is someone who can do the job well. Hindi lang someone na kayang gawin yung trabaho. Someone that, that, uh, who can do the job well or better than normal. Okay? And that someone who can do the job well is worth the salary and benefits that they are offering. Yun. Yun, yun yung something na kailangan mong intindihin. Kasi, most na kayong nag-a-apply, you know the job. But, who among your candidates can do the job better? Can do the job exceedingly? Yun ang hinahanap ng interviewer. Most interviewers, what they want to know, they want to answer or they, they would ask you, why should I hire you? What kind of person are you? Do you have what it takes? Or do you have the interest to work for us and to stay with us for the longest time? Do you, do you have the credentials? To get things done, you have a clear pattern of accomplishments. Yun. Actually, hindi naman nila tatanungin to ano eh, bluntly eh. Pero they will ask questions differently, but the answer would be the same with this question. So you just have to be prepared. Better yet, answer these questions para pag may meron na silang tinapong tanong sa'yo na ang sagot ay pareho, ang tanong is the same siya in a sense, then it would be easier for you to answer. Yun. At least you have an idea kung ano talaga ang hinahanap nila sa isang candidate. Okay? So again, they are looking for your uh, expertise and competence, interpersonal skills, decision-making skills, interest in the job. Importante yun kasi at times, we lose interest as time goes by. Kaya nagiging liability din pag yung tao is resign na or ayaw niya na mag-work. So they need to hire another person. So at this point in time, sa interview pa lang, ina-assess na nila if you are willing to do the job and you are going to stay for them with them for the longest time. Loyalty, interest yun. And also your personality and likability. Okay, so at least now you have an idea of what interviewers are looking for. Now, let's try to find out how the interview goes ba? Ano ba yung faces niya? So ito yung faces niya. Magsisimula yan sa greeting and small talk. Okay? Dito sa greeting and small talk, you have to establish common ground. Parang icebreaker lang, parang, yung nga, small talk. Parang, how do you do? Something like that. And then, um, introduce yourself. And at the same time, the interviewer, or after you, depende, whoever starts, as long as walang nagbabat in, then siya na yung mag-introduce sa sarili niya. Usually, the interviewer would do start. Since they initiated the interview, they would start. And then, they will just ask questions about you. Yun. And at this point, <clears throat> Okay, after, mamaya expand ko, but after the greeting and small talk, they will, uh, the interviewer will talk about the purpose of the interview. That's to uh, get the right candidate for the job. And then they will ask, and you have to answer general and then brief answers. And finally, the closing part, which is the, this is when they would indicate the next steps after the interview. Or they would tell you that you'll just expect an email or a phone call or something like this if you got the if you get if you got the post. Right. So that's the face. Now there are things that you have to be prepared of because there are these are subjects to be discussed during an interview. Okay. Even if this would be part of your resume, it's still important for you to be prepared whenever they talk, they would like you to talk about this. And these are your education, your work experience or your work history, the skills that you have, personal characteristics. 
as a whole, if you would, if you look at this, these four things, as a whole, this is your marketing package. Ito ang iyong binibenta sa kanila. So talaga, everyone is a salesperson because you are selling your services to them. There. And that's your whole marketing package. Yun. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay, dito na tayo sa ating tips. Punta muna tayo sa closing part para mas madaling maintindihan. Um, marami kasi tayong, um, I'm also guilty because there are a lot of times na, na ano, I have super duper, I mean, marami akong mistakes during my interviews before. Pero these are mistakes that you really need to avoid. As in, avoid mo to. Madali lang naman siyang ma-avoid eh. You just have to know that these things really occur for you to avoid them. Okay? And it's a big no-no. I, I mean, <laughs> ironic, right? A big no-no to say no. What do you mean? Saying no. Um, there are times na we all, aside from the interviewers having an impression about the candidate, the candidate also have impressions about the interview. At times, gusto mo yung role. However, the interview did not go well. You don't like the interviewer. Therefore, therefore, ayo mo na yung job. Yun. Diba? However, your dissatisfaction with the job may be with the interview itself and nothing to do with the job that you really want. Yun. May, minsan kasi may prejudice na tayo about sa company, about sa um, role natin because of the interview. But regardless of the reason, you should not say no to the job before it has been offered. You just have to think about saying yes or no after. You have to decide on your own. You do not tell the interviewer that, no, sorry, I decline. I do not like the offer. Mga ganun. Maybe your reason is about yung benefits. Maybe hindi na explain na maayos na interviewer. Kaya parang feeling mo nakukulangan ka sa benefits na yung offer nila. But you have to, you don't, you don't say no immediately. Okay? Kasi, kasi tao rin naman yung kakausapin mo eh. Baka nakalimutan lang or something like that. So you really, you, you have to avoid saying no. Huwag ka munang mag-decline sa offer. Okay? And also, another one, dalawa lang naman, saying no and apologizing or saying sorry. A big no-no, this is a super-duper red flag. Apologizing or saying sorry for your performance. Imagine you are giving, the start of the interview, you are giving a first impression. The end of the interview, you are giving a lasting impression to them. So you have to make it count. So the last words you impart to the interviewer or to your prospect client should be as positive as, as possible. Because when you apologize, it may look, it may seem, it may seem like you lack confidence. Because, di ba, start palang sabi ko, you should be confident. Apologizing that you did not perform well during the interview, it only shows you are not confident. That you did well in the interview. Okay? So, please don't say sorry. You, when you apologize then, sira lahat eh. Masisira lahat. Parang okay na. Parang siguro sa sarili mo lang yon na feeling mo hindi maganda yung performance mo. Pero in the interviewer's end, feeling niya okay naman. Kaya wala siyang parang makitang bad impression about you. But then you suddenly said sorry. Sira na. Nasira na yung performance mo in the whole duration of the interview process. So you have to avoid this. Okay? Make sure to never say no and to never say sorry. Those are the big, biggest no-no whenever you go and attend an interview. Right? Now, let's move on to tips. Ang pinaka-common as in super duper common na sasabihin or tatanungin sa yon ng interviewer is tell me about yourself. 
common to. I've heard this a lot of times in the interviews that I attended before. So, dito sa tell me about yourself, ang purpose lang na interviewer dito, gusto lang nilang ma magkaroon ng summary about your background as well as your experience. Okay? So, it may be around 60 to 90 seconds. Ganun lang siya ka-short. Right? And to answer this question kasi, minsan nila, ah, haba-haba na nang tell me about yourself kasi sinabi mo na lahat kung anong nasa resume mo. Para mas mapadali, this is how to answer this. You just have to think about your current or past position, education and training, skills and strengths that you make I mean, that make you good at your job or what you have done, projects that you've done before, accomplishments that you've received, high points of your career, what attracted you to the industry or to the field, and lastly, the goals for the future. These bullet points, itong man, mga to, again, you have to align them to the job that you're applying for. So, if you have a past experience related to the job, you own ang pag-usapan nyo. You own ang sabihin mo when they ask you to tell about your, tell them about yourself. Skills and strengths, yun nga, sinabi ko kanina, how to know your strength or how do you tell them about your strength. There, make a list. And then, demonstration. Yun. Again, related, relevant to the job. All right. And also, goals for the future. Relevant to the role pa rin. Pwede mo sabihin na if, uh, if I get, if I'll be part of your company, um, since I'll be a social media manager or a marketing manager, I'll make sure that I will exceed expectations so that in the long run, I will be the head of the marketing department. I could be the chief marketing officer, something like that. Diba? At, re at least your goals would, be, would relate to the job that you're applying for right now. Okay? And to help you out, let's go on and check some poor phrases and convert it to relevant or perfect replies. Okay. I, I have a few examples here that could help you out. Okay. First rule of thumb, don't use too few words. If you are asked, a yes or no question, do not just answer with a yes or no answer. You have to expound. Let's have an example here. Okay, so the question is, do you have experience in marketing? A poor answer would be, yes, I have experience in that area. Okay. Bakit to poor? It would encourage them to ask a follow-up question. More time wasted. So instead, you have to expound already. Kasi, they are not just seeking an answer of yes or no. Even if that's how they ask the question. They are seeking the relevance. Okay? So here is a perfect answer that I really like. If I ask Konare, do you have experience in marketing? Yes. I have over three years experience working as a social media manager. I've managed several Facebook pages, which includes VAI, Angelina's Jewels, and Sleep Magic A. O, di ba? Proof of your answering yes. That you have three years experience in the marketing industry. Under that, you worked as a social media manager. You managed three Facebook pages. O, di ba? Proof. Yon. So, that's how you make it better. Do not just answer it with a yes or no. Okay? Next one. Describe your skills with strong words, not weak words. I have here an example. Okay. Here is a poor phrase. I'm quite good with graphic designs, uh, at least most of the time, I think, or I am. I kind of taught myself how to use a software. Okay. Diba? Anong relevance nung, nung sinabi mo? Quite good. Those are weak words. 
Graphic designs? What graphic designs? What softwares are you talking about? And here's a better phrase. This is a better way for you to say it. I am very knowledgeable with Adobe Creative Cloud or Adobe Creative Package. When I was unfamiliar with these programs, I taught myself in less than a month. Oh, di ba? Very, it's a strong word. Knowledgeable, specific, yung software Adobe. Di ba? And also, you said that you taught yourself in less than a month. Meaning, you're telling them in a way that you are a quick learner. There. That's how important strong words are. Kaya maganda rin na whenever you talk to them, emphasize the strong words that you are using. Like, I am very knowledgeable. I am very knowledgeable. I taught myself in less than a month. I taught myself in less than a month. Yun. Para may exclamation point yung sinasabi mo, di ba? Mas na-emphasize na yung strong words. Okay, next one. Avoid using acronyms and jargons. Okay? Ito, example. I was an SSE and supported implementation of CRs every month. Ano daw? Ano ang SSE? Ano ang CR? O, di ba? Tatanungin pa nila yan. These could be acronyms or these are jargons that you have might use in the previous companies that you've worked for. Iba-iba ang ginagamit nilang terms or words. So, please do not use acronyms, do not use jargons. Expound as much as possible. So, instead of this per phrase, let's um, say it in a better way. In my previous position as a senior system specialist, yun pala yung meaning ng SSE, although SSS siya, I supported monthly change requests. Change requests pala yung CR. I supported monthly change requests to make sure customer requirements I mean, customer requirement changes are installed perfectly in the company server. O, oh, diba? You already provided what your role was, what you did in that role. Okay? And, ano yung naging effect niya? Diba? Installed perfectly. Okay. Similar to the first rule of thumb, to the second one as well. Don't use vague words. Yung mga hindi klarong words. Yun. Ito, example. I had a lot of experience with various lines of products. I am happy with the results I gave for the company. Ang question dito sa poor phrase na to, what lines of product? What results have you gave to the company? So you really have to expound. You really have to be as specific as possible. So, to make it better, this is how you say it, with over five years experience working in the e-commerce industry and primarily managing a Shopify store, I consider myself an expert in this matter and have helped clients incline their sales to up to 40%. O, diba? You already told them what industry you work for, how long you've worked there, and the result in, uh, on the client's end. There you go. And now, the top elimination mistakes that you need to avoid. Aside from yung big no-no kanina na dalawa. Okay. Mistake number one, arriving late during the interview. Late is something that is found upon, not just during an interview, even if you already start working. You have to understand that people or companies value time. If you value your time, the more that you have value, you, you have to value your um, the organization or the company's time. So you don't arrive late during an interview. It only mean, it only gives the worst impression possible before you even start talking to them before you you log in, since you already logged in late, my bad impression. Okay? So please, as early as possible, log in ka na. Since everything is done online, you have to system check. Check everything is working, your internet, your headset, 
you have you don't have any distraction distraction yon okay and then similar to being late is making excuses sorry for the term stupid making excuses kunari you arrived late sorry i forgot or something like that nag nagluko yung internet ko or anything that can be preempted kung nagluko ang internet mo chinek mo an hour ago then you had the chance to look for a place where you can have a good internet it's not a valid excuse. So you should not make excuses. Okay? It's a red flag. It only indic indicates that you are not willing to take responsibility and to do your work. Yun. Kaya, do not make excuses. Interviews in the VA industry happens usually online. So, since everything is done online, it's more on checking your hardware, your software, make sure that everything is working. Do it an hour or two hours before. At least if something happens, you already have a chance to fix it before your interview starts. Okay. Next one is showing up with a poor appearance or a negative appearance. Hmm. Inappropriate to the job. I mean, inappropriate because you are you are marketing yourself and this is a professional field so you have to show them that you are professional looking so avoid poor quality of clothing plunging necklines omg Do, um you have to select appropriate colors for your clothes uh, dress well smart casual is good you should already know some basic grooming habits kung you make up not too not too heavy sa makeup you can make it as light as possible or no makeup makeup at all like me or it's up to you basta you are neat looking professional look okay sabi ko nga kanina first impression counts and they will remember you for a very long time so make sure na they remember you in a positive way Okay. Next one, showing bad or negative attitudes. Oh my gosh. Magpa, Magpapa-impress ka nga, magyayabang ka. Although, you are marketing yourself, it's different with being nagyayabang. Okay? So, you have to, you have to take note of that. Okay? Um, being aggressive, sobrang opinionated ka sa mga bagay, judgmental, Nagko complain ka, those are bad attitudes. Oh my gosh, they are risky. Okay? R risky sa part din na nag interview At ipag nakita nilang risky ka, then goodbye. They might not continue with the interview. Same with engaging in inappropriate behaviors. Kunari, guwapo man o maganda man yung nag interview sa iyo, yung prospect client mo, do not flirt with them. Inappropriate behavior. Those are things na ina-avoid nila. Baka pag ginawa mo to, hindi na matuloy. Tapusin na nila agad. Okay? Showing off your scars, tattoos, picture of the family. If it's not really necessary and they, not, they did not ask for it, then don't do it. Okay? Next one, being inarticulate. Hindi ka maintindihan. Mumbling. Using filters like, you know, ano, Manny Pacquiao lang. You know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Something like that. I and I'm guilty with this. There are times really that I use feelers, but I'm avoiding them as much as possible. Do so. So, minsan naman hindi ka maintindihan. Issues yon kung gumagamit ka ko narin ng headset and may issue yung headset mo. Kaya nga, sabi ko kanina, you have to prepare an hour before. At least you can check your systems, you can check your camera, you can check your sounds if it's working. If your mic is properly working so that you can understand each other, especially the interviewer, they can, they can easily understand what you are saying. Okay? Alright. And again, syempre, similar kanina, sabi ko nga, complete answers. Be as specific as possible because it's a mistake to have incomplete answers. Yung mga yes, no, maybe na mga answer na yan, it only shows na... Parang, ano, hindi ka talaga, hindi, 
hindi mo talaga nagawa yung role na yun, ganun. Parang hindi ka rin sure, kumbaga. Kasi yes or no lang eh. Their purpose of really asking that question is not to get a yes or no from you. But instead, they want a specific answer. That's why. And lastly, a mistake. No sense of direction. A lack of sense of direction. Ito yung parang kung ano-ano na lang sinasabi mo sa answer nila. These types of candidates appear to have no goals at all or no objectives at all. So you have to make sure that you avoid these mistakes. There. Big no-no. So avoid them. Alright? So more advices that I can give you since napag-aralan ko to sa dinami-dami na experience ko when I attended a lot of interviews. Siyempre, sa dinami-dami na tra naging trabaho ko, naging client ko, I had a lot of interviews. There are just times na my resume and cover letter would do and they hired me. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yes, it really happened. However, if you go through interviews, then these are really advice that I recommend. Number one, important, active listening. Oh, yun. Talagang makinig ka. No distractions. Be calm. Leave emotions outside. Okay? Kung may problema ka, iwan mo na yung problema mo. Mag-interview ka muna. Para pag natapos na interview at nakuha mo yung trabaho mo, kung may money problems ka na, tapos, di ba? Wala na yung money problems mo. Oh, be polite to the interviewer. Do not assume. Even if you heard maybe a part of the question before, do not answer immediately. Let them finish the question. Kasi baka mayroong sasabihin doon na hindi pala yun yung, tan yung similar na tan tanong na sa'yo dati at nag-assume ka na. O, di ba? Hmm. Big no-no. You really have to pay attention and remove any distraction. Kung non-voice ang trabaho mo, this is the only time that you have to look for a silent place, no distractions, um, turn your cell phone off, and really concentrate to the interviewer. Okay? So you have to be aware of your body language, slow down whenever you speak, huwag magmadali, and avoid mumbling. Okay? So that's how active listening would really help you out. Okay? So kung hindi, at times talaga hindi mo maintindihan, kunwari, there's a, um, biglang nag, uh, a static noise, something like that, then feel free to ask. Pero wag naman lagi. Kasi it only shows na hindi ka nakikinig. Okay? So talagang, listen. Actively listen. And then, sa body language na tayo, sa body language naman, is your expressions. Okay? If you make a bad impression from the start, you may be ruled out immediately. Kasi bago ka pa magsalita, ang una-una makikita ng interviewer is your body language. Okay? So, how do you make sure that you have a terrific first impression? The easiest answer is to make sure that you are dressed well. Sabi ko kanina, di ba? Dress, dress professionally. And then, you look clean and smart. And then, your body language, you really have to have eye contact with them. If you have built-in camera na on your laptop, then it's okay. You just have to make sure it's within eye level para mas madali kang maka-eye contact. Kasi, di ba nga, virtual ito. So, ang eye contact nyo is via the web. Kung meron ka namang external, yon you have to, ano, you have to really, parang ilagay mo in a way na mag eye level sa'yo para mas madali ka na maka- um, eye contact dun sa nag interview So, that's how body language works. Okay? So, beware of how your eyes move around. Do they naturally move around? Do you make small talk easily? Or are you convenient? O masyado ka bang formal, reserved, and masyado kang parang under attack, na defensive mode, ganon. So, be careful with that. Good posture. Do not lean back. Do not slouch. Facial expression should always be friendly. Okay? Your voice should be as clear and well-spoken as possible. Do not cross your arms kasi it would appear na you are defensive or close to communication. And yung natural lang na pag, ano, 
uh, pag blink ng eyes mo. No rolling of eyes ha, just natural blinking. Ah, ganun. And lastly, and most importantly, is you smile. The importance of smiling, it would lessen the tension, promise. It would lessen the tension, it would lessen any nervousness, nervousness that you nervous. Nervousness that you feel. Yun. Yeah, you have to smile. A slight smile would do. At least, yun yung unang makikita nila sa'yo. And then when you talk, yun na. Parang nag smile na rin on how, you, on how you talk or how you answer questions from the interviewer. It would help you a lot. I know talagang kakabakaba before. So inhale deep. And when you start, start with a smile. Your first impression. Okay? So, that's it for our discussion about acing your interview. I hope you learned a lot here and good luck to your interview. Sana makuha ka and I hope to see you in our next lesson. Have a good day. Bye!